All right, welcome back. So here we have our quick change gearbox. It's been all modeled up in SolidWorks. I've gotten all the components off of it that I needed for that. And if you remember seeing the short video I did a while back, I did get most of the paint stripped off of that. So really all that's left now, go over with a sanding block, finish up some of the uh, more egregious casting defects, and then we can start to move on to filling this, getting it smoothed out and ready to paint. So this I'd say is officially puts us uh, back towards the reassembly part of this restoration. And I've just been going at this a little bit with sandpaper here, cleaning up some of these edges and corners where the casting was pretty roughly done. And otherwise getting this really nice and cleaned up and once it's once that's all been done, go over this with a rag with acetone and clean up everything else that I can go at it and start hitting it with the body filler. And one thing that I am planning to do with this as well is I've actually ordered the proper color of a, just the high temp uh, engine oil resistant paint to go on the inside here as well so that we can actually refinish the inside of these uh, gearboxes and everything. Because I want a nice clear and clean coat. Not clear, but you know, nice clean flat coat that goes into all these so I can, first of all, make sure I'm not leaving any chips or anything in there when I go to uh, put everything back together and cleaned up. But second of all, this one, especially with that, uh, as you can see here, I've got some of the uh, that paint remover drip down and kind of eat into that a little bit. You can see though this is pretty nicely cleaned out. I did have a couple bearings that I couldn't really get out of here. This bearing up here I actually pulled out and did a clean up on it because I couldn't actually find that one online to purchase. So I did a good clean out of it and uh, just a little bit of time with a small wire brush and some oil and it really got it running smoothly on both of these. So I'm not too worried about these ones. This one I probably want to get a little bit more, a little bit more uh, oil washed through that before I put it back together. But uh, yeah, I do what I can. Like this, this whole piece right here is actually a, is actually part of another assembly that just goes into that, and matches the one that's up top here. Kind of out of frame up here. There's an entire bearing housing that fits in and the one on the bottom matches and Try as I might I just couldn't get this lower one out and so And I couldn't get the bearing out of the upper one either. So those ones are just for now are really just gonna have to Live with being that way one thing I do want to do is get some of these oil lines tightened up so yeah that's, that's the plan going forward with this just getting it cleaned up and ready for some paint well, another day time to get some progress done on this and we get the fun time of doing some body fill Well, I think step one is figuring out how to open this. I'm sure those of you who are especially keen-eyed might be able to tell. I haven't exactly done this before. I mean... Other than getting the lid off, how hard can it be? Well, that lid's off, and uh, I think I got just of the instructions, so just need to get a dab of the little bottle. Wow, but the big stuff. Mix it all together. 
And from here, it'll create its little hardened amalgamation. Uh, get that spread in really well, nice and pink. I don't know, they tell me to set a timer for this thing. <laughs> no, uh, I'm sure the process isn't that hard. What? People do this every day, right? Yeah, a good look at uh, pulling all the paint off of this casting, and it definitely had its fair share of damage and defects. I did get a decent amount of the r large uh, high spots out of it. With the sandpaper, but uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely one a little bit better than just just vaguely smooth. So when we go here, I get uh, yeah, that's uh, a lot on one spatula. So. I understand it. I just want to spread down a thin layer pressed into place. Uh, a little bit thicker than that, but uh, yeah, with the idea being that we'll sand out any of the extra and get it nice and smooth. Really, we just want to get it down into all those cracks and cuts and scrapes. And work with this about as quick as is reasonable because it does set up in a few minutes apparently. So it's saying the working time being about three to four minutes for the uh, optimal batch. Getting in those corners isn't as easy as I'd hope, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, get this all layered on. And I'm back. And with that, come bearing the type of uh, Gems of wisdom that you only get from spending half an hour pretending to know what you're doing. First off, I'm relatively certain that uh, the only people who are actually good at this are the people smart enough not to work on tightly curved surfaces. But second of all, however much of this body fill you think you're going to be able to apply in about three minutes, uh, it's definitely going to be about half as much as that. Yeah, and last off, I'm just uh, going to have to settle with the fact of either applying this a dozen times or putting way too much on the first time and just sanding it down. So, preparing for that uh, second alternative, uh, I'll let this cure out and Hopefully I don't need too much of a second or third coat on it to get everything filled. You know, I don't think uh, having the garage door open while a storm rolls in is exactly what they had in mind when they say work in a wall banner. But maybe that. That'll have to work for me. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be fun. Look at all that. Yeah, this will take no time at all, right? Just a few heavy hours of manual labor. Never killed anybody, right? Uh, at least I have a sanding block for this. Imagine what I'd... 
all the other stuff I sent in on this before I decided to spend five dollars. Don't imagine that, it wasn't fun. At least it looks like this actually gave me a nice fill on all the parts where I glopped it down as heavily as possible. Give this, you know, a week or two and I might actually have a nice surface to start painting on. But enough with the complaining. I'll get back to work. And now, I know someone in the comments is going to say, just buy an orbital sander. What do I look like? I made of money? Plus, the last time I borrowed any tools from my brother, I ended up with a garage as a storage shed for two years. So, hard way it is. Oh. So, I definitely ended up putting up a, a lot more on the top here than I had... Uh, really thought to it really goes on thick real quick but on a positive note it does leave a nice smooth finish so I guess that's what I was going for right so I've been messing with this for about a week and a half now and I've gotten to the point where I think if I just keep messing with it any longer, I'll never get around to painting it. And worst can happen if I screw this up, I'll just strip it off and start again. But I really need to just start moving forward with this and stop procrastinating about mistakes I might end up making with this. And if it doesn't look great, then well, I guess that's how it is. It's not like I'm an experienced professional of this. So, we're just going to go ahead and throw down a first coat of white on this. And I've used those other brushes, the, uh, the uh, standard, you know, chip brush type of hair like brush. I was having a lot of issues with the paint on other things going badly with that. So this time I decided I think I'll try out these foam brushes giving from my experience a lot even more of an even coat on things and generally just able, able to apply things a lot smoother and from the experiences I've had with this type of enamel paint, even with the hardener, you just, you throw it on a little too thick and it never wants to fully cure, so. And I'm not taping up things on this because I plan on having to do some cleanup on this anyway. So. Just lay down a thin layer till it looks mostly through and it's okay. There's a little bit of streaking. This is enamel paint after all. It's going to thicken up and flatten itself out a bit because it's designed to have a little bit of a congeal factor. And another thing about cleaning up the edges on this is I know for a fact some of these surfaces aren't nearly as uh, polished and smoothed out as I would like anyway. I would like to go over them with something to clean them up. So, I might as well just give them a light polishing after everything's painted. Yeah, some of those parts I think uh, just already throwing a single coat on there looks like will need to be cleaned up a little bit. But one of the benefits of enamel paint is that things can flow together 
pretty well, even if you're just doing touch-ups. So my thinking here is I'll throw a single coat on, look at how everything kind of comes out, look at the problem areas, and anything that came out uh, looking real horrendous, I uh, will sand down a little bit more in that area, maybe throw down a little bit of fill on, you know, like sand it down back to iron and throw a little bit more fill on that area and just be real careful about the sort of cleanup and coverage on that so I don't have to do too much extra standing. And then I can go over the whole assembly again with uh, light sanding to kind of smooth it out and throw on another coat. And I'm definitely planning on having to do two or three coats to get a nice, real smooth, glossy finish on this. Yeah, so I've got the enamel white here, which is going to be my base color and I've thrown again some of the enamel curing agent to harden the paint out and it should make it so that uh, this time tomorrow the paint is cured well enough that it's got a semi-hard finish on it and that way I can throw another coat on tomorrow night if I don't have to do too much prep and cleaning and if I do have to do some more prep and cleaning then I guess it'll just be the night after that that I get my next coat on but uh, I mean today's Tuesday and I would like to have this painted by the weekend That's the plan, at least. We've all seen how good my plans have gone so far, but uh, it's always hope. Okay, it's been about a week, and as you can see, I've been having some fun here, getting all these little components painted. So we've got the main body of this lathe is going to be white. And I want all of the handles, the lettering, you know, detail parts being in black. And that's just kind of the color scheme I'm going for. And as you can see, all of the inner components, anything that faces towards the inside of any of the oil bearing spots, the entire inside of our quick change gearbox, all of it is going to be painted that nice uh, bright orange kind of... Uh, primerish type of look and it's all the same uh, enamel paints so should hold up really well to the oil and grease and it should make it so it's a lot easier for me to see where any of the uh, buildup gets in the inside with all of that what I'm going to do now is you can see there's these po these parts where they're normally supposed to be just machine sur surfaces and they've just got a little bit of uh, paint over the edge of them. I'm going to give those all a quick sand down and start assembling this. I am going to be doing that off camera though. Just It's been taking a long time getting everything put together. I'm like, you know, everything done. So I just would uh, be a little bit easier to put it all to, back together. And plus, I have the video taking apart. It's the same thing in reverse, so... Anyway, uh, I'll be back with that. Yeah, all right, there we go. I'm, uh, I didn't put the top on just because, as you can see, it uh, got a bit messed up during reassembly as far as little bits of paint that got damaged and grime and stuff, and so I didn't want to finish the last little bits, including the plate, until I've got it on the machine so I can do some uh, touch-up work, but... Uh, we got this all 
working. You can see got all the gear teeth there will spin as they should. Well, this is lined up. Of course, some of these are uh, pretty hard to turn by hand, but there we go. I think that might actually be one of the easiest ones. But yeah, it's great to have this out of the way and ready to go back on the machine once the machine is cleaned up and painted itself and as you can see it's not really close to that I need to get back into get all the uh, stuff back into the headstock and yeah but uh, I think I've uh, delayed this video long enough and uh, see you guys all next time